Good morning. Welcome to our confirmation worship uh, this morning, and we're delighted to have uh, you all with us today. If you're a guest and visiting with us on this day God has made, uh, we pray for God's blessing on these guys who are being confirmed today, and uh, we give thanks for their lives in, uh, in faith this day. There's an announcement sheet if there's some... Uh, if you get a chance, take a look at all of them there. We also thank the Consecration Sunday team uh, for preparing everything this last week. Uh, we've got Brian Ulrich and Paul Radens and Haley Entner, Tana Quimby, Todd Moldbauer, Steve Szymanski, and Ellery in the office, and many other helpers that helped to make that just a great day this last week. We thank our musicians today. We've got... Uh, uh, Tammy over here, and Mara, and Wayne, and Steve, and Paul, and Max, and Jen uh, on the piano. Anybody else I can see over there? I think we got them all. Thank them for leading us in our songs today. Uh, the Wednesday Education Youth event went great. The trick-or-treat uh, for the food shelf, and thanks to those who drove and got that all set. Just an announcement, another thing getting all set is our new wine trip. For this next uh, summer, if that's something that you have interest in, there's a parent meeting tonight, 7 o'clock here, and uh, there are some brochures out here if you'd like uh, that tell some information about the trip. This year we're going to Colorado, so if anybody would like to come with us, let us know. Uh, we've also got sign-up charts. Uh, look for the guy in the red shirt for Pentecost, Dennis, who uh, has him for the Ludafist Supper, and we'll pass that around if you'd like to help out. That's coming right up on the 12th of November. Are there any other announcements this morning anyone would like to emphasize? All right. If not, then uh, we sing our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Please stand.
and let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we pray for your blessing upon these being confirmed today, these students, these confirmands. We thank you, God, for the gift of faith that you have placed in their hearts. Fan into a flame that which is burning, and uh, that, that they may be led by your Holy Spirit in this journey of life with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right. We're going to sing a song. Um, it's called Bananas. And uh, you guys know the song? You know Bananas? The, all right. The, we're going to just sing it together. And every week uh, we've, uh, we've sung this on Wednesday nights, and so some of them may know. Um, and uh, anybody want to help lead? You want to lead them? I'm going to get my guitar. I'll be right with you. Yay! Yeah, dance. Ready? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, I think it would be kind of cool if at least they stood up and helped us with this song. All right. Just kind of stand up, guys, and turn around so they kind of know what's going on. They did it like you did every week. <laughs> I'm ready? Turn around. Well, you don't have to, okay? I like bananas. I think the mangoes are sweet. I like papayas. Papayas? But nothing can be the sweet. Target that came out of the I like a mina, a mina, but nothing can be the sweet love. Like my papa, my papa, think my siblings are me. I like a mama, a mama, but nothing can be the sweet. There it is. Let's get me. All right. Thank you. Be seated. <laughs> For our readings this morning, <clears throat> we have a reading from Jeremiah. First stop, and uh, Dominic's going to read that one for us. of the gospel, Jeremiah 31st. <laughs> the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This time we invite the kids who are here to come on up for a children's message. We've got our, sing, our song we're going to sing as they come up. Come on up.
All right. Well, what help? What might help me to see something different, differently, when I look at it? Uh, let's see here. What do I need to see? I need my eyes, right, to see things. All right. What else do I need? What if, what if it's dark? What do I need to see things? Turn on the flashlight to see or, or whatever it would be, right? How about these things? What are these? Sunglasses. All right. These are kind of fun. If I had these sunglasses, you think they'd help me to see things different, differently? Yeah, let me just might. I might see music everywhere I go because I've got guitars, you know, my, my cool glasses. And it's kind of a different color. Or if I have these glasses, maybe they help me see different. What kind of glasses are these? Clear ones. Clear ones. Yes, they help you can see, which is nice too, so I can read the right words and see faces and so on. Right. Well... Today's a day called Reformation Sunday. Uh, we hear words like from Jesus who says, um, you know, follow me and you'll know the truth. All right, great. Um, we hear from Jesus about things so that we can see more clearly, so we can see things in a new way. Uh, where the world says be mean, Jesus says be nice, be love, loving of other people, love people. Where the world says, hang on to everything you got. Jesus says, love one another, share with each other. And so he helps us to see in a different way, see the world different. And that's what this day, Reformation Day, is about too. Um, so let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you help us to see differently. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can have a, uh, some candy and you can maybe get, take one, give one, and take another one to give somebody you know or who you just like to give one to. All right. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Good choice. <laughs> All right. The Holy Gospel is according to John, the 8th chapter, beginning with, the verse, with verse 31. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in a household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Reformation Sunday in the Lutheran Church here, and it's good to consider what it is that led us to this day, from whence we come. A little over 500 years ago, a lot of people in Europe wanted to see reform in the church, reform in society. They wanted to talk more about what the Bible said rather than just what people said. They wanted to follow God not just traditions, for the sake of following traditions. They wanted to follow Jesus and uh, about what he really said and meant. He talked about the Bible and faith and grace and salvation through Christ alone. 
They started singing more in church, allowing worship to be done in different kinds of ways. They talked about living out your faith and serving God, not only through doing religious things, but by, but by taking care of other people and you know around you and in your family, serving God in your work, in your vocation, whatever it may be. They encouraged independent thinking and started schools and community chests in order to take care of people. And it literally transformed society, transformed the world around them. And those key events of 500 years ago shaped the course of our world. Those key events are one reason why Confirmation Sunday, a lot of times in churches, are on this day, on Reformation Sunday as well, as we uh, celebrate and thank God for the Holy Spirit that moves through the church in powerful ways, and powerful ways in people's lives uh, every day. And here's a Reformation Sunday thought. As followers of the one called Jesus, when we continue to seek the best way to follow him with each year we are given, there's going to be reform. And the Reformation goes on. As it has been through the centuries, Jesus is with his church through all the tumult in every age, sustaining us and leading us to love one another and to have hope always in our gracious God. Christ could return any year, and we should be ready. But if the world in this age is still moving along, who knows what Christ's church on this earth will look like in another 500 years from now. Only God has a clear picture of that. Meanwhile, we want to strive to live faithfully. And the Reformation goes on. Martin Luther, the German Lutheran well, a German Catholic monk who became a Lutheran uh, was also a professor. Uh, and he never wanted really to start a new church, but to reform the church. And then there was that epic moment in history of Luther walking up to the castle church door in Wittenberg and nailing the 95 theses to the door, inviting others to debate some of the points where people thought that the church had gotten off track. Well, maybe it'll be a while before all the different kinds of churches are truly together in the unity that Christ calls us to. Catholics and Lutherans and Presbyterians and Methodists and Baptists and Pentecostals and Russian Orthodox and Ukrainian Orthodox. But one way or another, throughout the world, by God's Holy Spirit, Reformation continues to happen and goes on wherever people are following Jesus. A couple key things about Reformation. First of all, it's about worshiping God, not just tradition. And that's always been at the core of true Reformation. A lot of great traditions um, in our faith, in our church, in our lives. But when we remember always, it's first and foremost about worshiping God and not those traditions themselves then reform can happen and life comes to God's church. In the gospel lesson today, Jesus is speaking to a band of people who have come to follow him, inspired by his teaching, amazed by his miracles, and they're thinking more about their tradition. However off their view was in that regard, and they were thinking about then they were thinking more about that than their relationship with God. So the words of Jesus have made them a little testy. And <clears throat> he says, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And you'll be my disciples. But the people hearing him that day got really upset. What do you mean we'll be free, they said to Jesus. We are the sons and daughters of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. Jesus points out a far greater truth. Whoever commits a sin is a slave to that sin. But I'll tell you one thing, Jesus concluded, if the Son of God makes you free, 
You'll be free indeed. About 500 years ago, in Germany, a monk named Martin Luther was not free because he was tormented by a guilt that he felt that he could never please an angry God. And then one day he had an epiphany while studying the book of Romans as a scholar, an incredible scholar that he was of the church, a teacher. And he read in Romans and in the book of Habakkuk, which both say the same thing, that the righteous will live by faith. That righteousness isn't something that we earn by following the rules. It's a gift that God gives us through faith. All we need to do is believe it. Grace comes, and forgiveness is given in Jesus' name. And everybody messes up, right? Everyone has sin in this world. Well, any punishment that we deserve for our wrongdoing in Jesus' name is wiped away, and we are totally free, and we believe he gave his life for us. The problem is we don't always live as though it's true that our God is a gracious God. Worshiping our gracious God who gave it all for us. Worshiping God, not tradition. It's always a key aspect of Reformation. And our, another thing about Reformation is always that God wants us to be truly free. Now being truly free isn't just about doing whatever I want to do, whatever we want to do. Restrictions and rules aren't the only things that are a drag. The main thing that keeps us down so often is sin itself. We are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. That's really what holds us back. Writer and radio personality, Pastor Oswald Hoffman, told the story about Mac the family dog. Every day when Hoffman left for work, he chained up Mac to the step. And he'd been doing this for so long that Mac had worn out a semicircle in the grass where the chain constrained him. He chased the mail carrier and the paper carrier and the kids on bikes and runners passing by, always held captive by the length of that chain. One day... Hoffman let Mac outside, but he forgot to hook him up to the chain. And nine hours later, Hoffman came home and saw Mac chasing cats and cars and bikes, but only to the edge of the yard, only to the worn-out semicircle. Poor Mac, he was free of all the chains, but he didn't know it. So he lived like he was enslaved. As Pastor Steve Moline of our Savior's Lutheran in, in Stillwater, who once served there, put it this way. Are we ever so conditioned that we think God has us on a leash and we better not stray too far or God will punish us? And he writes, that's not freedom. That is not taking into account God's grace. That's slavery. The very thing that Jesus died for so that we could live lives of joy not shame. Free is good, but somehow, somehow we have forgotten that truth. But the Reformation goes on. And it's not just about history and tradition, but how God wants you to be continually made new and set free. Not just in the 16th century, but every day. What might it look like for you to be reformed these days, not to get so distracted by the small stuff so your mind can be on great things that God has with, to, with you, for you. It may mean if you get stuck in a rut, you, you get God's help to pull out of it. Is it to ignore all those electronic gadgets just for a few hours in a day and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Maybe it's to volunteer somehow out of your comfort zone, growing in faith, and your spirituality goes way beyond tradition to a deep daily walk with God. It's really quite possible that God could change the course of the world 
through that kind of faith today as well. Leading churches to adapt and find awesome and unthought of ways to be church. Influencing society through science and education and arts as it happened repeatedly through the Reformation. And we give it different terminology today, but that's really what got people so fired up those 500 years ago when this thing called the Reformation really got going. And believe it, it can keep happening. God can su- surprise us always by the Spirit in every age and breathe new life into us as followers of His Son, Jesus Christ. And it changes the world. The Reformation goes on. What would it look like for things within you and around you to be reformed in Christ today? How can we better be the church in this particular time in history? Right where we are today, God is calling us to follow his son Jesus today. The son has made you free indeed. And there's nothing you can do to earn that freedom. It's a free gift by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can do to earn this freedom. It's been done by Jesus for you on the cross. And what it comes down to this is once again, now what are you going to do with that? Well, freed from the weight of trying somehow to earn God's approval, now we can live as free children of God who just want to serve God and take care of all these other people around us that God loves too. And God doesn't need our works, but our neighbors do. They do. Now as much as ever, they do. And the Reformation goes on. May we worship God, not tradition. May we be comforted and empowered with that promise and assurance that in our baptism into Christ, we are made truly free. And may we keep on serving the people around us as we ponder how our lives can be continually reformed as we ponder the question, what are you going to do now that there's nothing you can do as the Son of God has made you free? To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, keep on reforming us, reshaping us, resending us into the world to be your people standing up for truth, living out our faith active in love, trusting in you for our salvation, changing the world in our time as well, continually seeking your will to be done, giving you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to sing Pharaoh, Pharaoh, just a couple verses anyway, another good one. A Wednesday night song. As we receive this morning's offering as well. All right, so. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. A burning bush told me just the other day that I should hit over here and stay. Gotta get my people out of Pharaoh's hand and lead them all to the promised land. They say, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and God's people are coming to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army coming after me. Raise my rod, stuck it in the sand. And all God's people walk across dry land. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right.
Please stand as we say together our statement of faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I do. Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Everyone but the confirmants may be seated, and then if you guys will step forward. These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and are ready to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in a community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And I ask you who are being confirmed today, you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I believe. At this point, um, you may be returned to your seats, and then each time the, we have a confirmant come forward, they'll kneel, and we'll invite uh, family to come forward, parents, sponsors, anyone that would like to, for laying out of hands at that part of the service. time, we invite Mason to come forward and his family and sponsors. Your hands on the shoulder of your table. Let us pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Mason David Anderson the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Uh, Emily? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Emily Rose Berg, the gift of her Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, 
empower her in serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Marissa Ann Bomsten the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in grace in John Gazette, the, spirit, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Keller David Hansen the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Maya Marie Johnson, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm, his, confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Joshua David Kleinfelter the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Drew Curtis Lund, the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Dominic Lee Sufka, 
the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up an Alyssa Jean Vogel, the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, and give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Joseph T. Wells the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. At this time, I invite the confirmands to stand up and turn around and face the congregation. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Let's give them a hand of encouragement. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a gesture of peace with those around us. As a gift of the congregation, we also are presenting each confirmant with a Bible, a student study Bible. And so, We'll have a chance um, to encourage them and, and talk to them as they'll shake hands on the way out. I wanted to get these certificates of confirmation to them as well before that. I've been amazed over the years, 28 years as a pastor, how many people hang on to these <laughs> to remember this day as an important milestone of faith. Um, and, uh, 
as we remember um, all that it means to be confirmed in Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This time we invite uh, those who are serving communion to come forward uh, to help uh, prepare for uh, serving the bread and the, and the wine and grape juice. We have grape juice available for those who request. Um, also, we have gluten-free, corn-free wafers for those who would request them. The table is ready. We come and eat.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We sing our benediction song. It's been a tradition to join hands here. You don't have to if you want to, but if you'd like to, please do so at this time and we sing the song. our ascending sun will light your world. There is a candle in every soul Some burning brightly Some burning cold There is a spirit who brings a fire